Good one. <laughs> okay, so I'm Tara. I'm Izzy. And I'm Dennis. And, and we are. <laughs> yeah, so so we have uh, roughly <laughs> half an hour. Um, so Tara and I are going to start by asking Dennis some questions, and then we're going to open it out to you guys. So if you have anything burning that you want to ask, then just keep it in mind. So we're going to go straight in. Yep. If that's good. okay with you. Um, so just broadly, what inspired you to write Girls and Boys? Um, I'd, I'd heard this. I'd heard there was a few things. I think I heard this phrase, um, "family annihilation." And it sort of stayed with me because it's such a fucking awful phrase. Like, it's just a terrible thing to say about a family, annihilate. It's just an awful thing to say about a family. And I, I found very little about it, you know. There was, like, a documentary, a radio documentary I heard, and very little written about it. Occasionally we hear these stories. That was one thing. And then uh, another thing was uh, my, my ex-wife is, uh, is an actress, and she kept moaning at me to write her a monologue. And, uh, <laughs> and I didn't really write this for her, but it sort of stayed in my mind. And, um, but also I wanted to write about a thing about family, and, and, uh, or sorry, not about family, but about love and about a, a relationship and how it sort of blossoms and dies. So, so a few things, really. Cool. Sorry, my answers are always a bit like that, a bit gone. <laughs> no, it's all right. Um, why was it important for you that it was a woman telling a story by herself? Um, it was very important because um, we often, with, with these sorts of things, we, we're fascinated by the perpetrator. Mm. So, for example, the shootings in Florida recently, we're all fascinated with how that guy did it, you know? Mm. We're... We don't really hear much more about the victim, you know. So we, we, we hear the stuff that scares us. So we hear, oh, my God, they hid under the desk. They, they, they you know, they, um, they did this, they did that. Uh, but we don't hear what their lives were like, you know. And particularly with this, these, we decided in this, with this play that this character would fucking hate to be in this play. She doesn't, she doesn't you know, she's quite a lively, vibrant sort of person. Um, and as a result, and she's like that for a reason, so that we don't just think she's a victim. It's very easy when some, to, to sort of when something happens to think, yeah, that happens to people over there. Mm. They're, they're like that. I'm not like that. But actually, that's not true. I mean, this stuff happens. To the, the people that this ha happens to, uh, not that much different from any of, any of us. So, you know, that's a long-winded way of not answering your question. <laughs> um, so, did you find it? Was it a particular challenge having to write from a female perspective yourself? Uh, I've written a lot of stuff. I mean, I wrote, I, I wrote a, a comedy called Pulling, uh, which was uh, about three women. I wrote that with a friend of mine, Sharon Horgan, who uh, that was our first thing on TV we did together. And I've written a few things for women. And uh, I once got advice from someone, a, man, a male writer writing for women, and he said, what I do when I want to write women is I write a bloke and I just change the name around. And I thought that was the worst fucking advice <laughs> I've ever heard. Uh, and it's not fair of me to say that now, because he was trying to be helpful. But, um, I mean, I think the thing is, is you write a person. Do you know what I mean? You write a person, and like a woman, you, as a woman, you don't walk around going, what does a woman think today? You know, what do I think today as a woman? And, you know, but the thing is, is what is odd about it is, I sometimes think men and women have struggle more writing for women than they do for men. Because um, you don't sort of overturn... 10,000 years of men being at the centre of things in 100 years, you know what I mean? So it, it's, it's, it, there is, there's something in culture that it makes it a little bit hard. We're, we're still not quite used to putting women's voices centre stage. We're getting a bit better at it, but we're still not used to it, I think. Um, there was a running theme about men in power, men having power. Yeah. So what was the idea around that? Uh, do you know what I thought? I've thought for years, and I don't think I'm right here, but I have thought for years that you know, if any objective look at our species would have to conclude that you know men are not good at having power, you know. And I, I say this not as a man; I say this as a human being. You know, um, yeah. it, if we looked at if we look at ourselves objectively, um, we are undoubtedly an extremely violent species. We're brutal. Um, you know, we're, we're very few species murder. Very, very, very few. I think it's us ants and chimps, you know. And we do it in, in hugely. We do it so much more than they do. 
Um, and the truth is 91%, I think, of murders are committed by men. Nearly all sexual assaults are committed by men. Uh, men are just extremely violent. And I, I say that as a man, I say that with no sort of sense of like, self-flagellation or anything like that. But um, I, just, I've just, I suppose I thought there's part of me that thinks if we were to be objective about this, we would sort of say it's probably not good to give those guys the power, you know. And, and they have had, the, men have had the power for a long time because they're, probably because they're better at hitting people because, you know, that's how you get power, you know. Um, but we're sort of moving beyond that, I think, you know. I mean, I don't know if I totally believe that, by the way. I'm not saying that all power should be taken from men. Yeah. I just think it's an interesting thing to talk about. Mm, definitely. So when you're writing and starting to sort of form ideas in your head, how do you know when an idea you might be sort of toying with is strong enough to be formed into a play? I think you don't, you know. I think, I think like with this, uh, I had this idea of kicking around. And with, with all ideas, what happens, I think, is you have an idea and you think, oh, that's a, that's a good, that might be interesting. And then you think, no, that's shit, that's a terrible idea. <laughs> and this happened with this as well. You're like, and you think, oh, no, maybe... And if what you need to do is at a certain moment you just need to go, fuck it, I'm going to write it, <laughs> and you you try you start, and like sometimes you get to the end, and sometimes you don't. Like I've got a play now that I've started about. I'm supposed to be writing this play for this German theatre, and I've started it about three times, and it, the start of it feels good, but there's something in the idea that's not working. You know what I mean? And it probably won't ever quite work. You know what I mean? But. It's hard to recognise when an idea is good. I think you recognise when it's good when when people are liking it in the audience, and you recognise you recognise when it's bad when they're not. And like, you know, and it's I've had so many things that on now, and like you you kind of don't know, you know, and you kind of don't know until everyone's gone. Well, that was shit. Why did you do that? You know, it's terrifying. Um, was it important that the main character was from a working class background? It's not important to the play, it was just important to me, you know, okay. so I guess I'm from a working class background and I think um, there, there was a time, when I started out there was lots of working class voices on stage um, and they, in fact, too, I think too many, I think in this theatre it, it was a bit sort of, it was kind of ridiculous really, everything was sort of like working class realism and I wasn't, if I'm honest, I wasn't too fond of it, you know, uh, and it was a scooch patronising as well in places, although it was well meaning, you know. But then something happened and it changed hugely. And now I think you very rarely get working class voices on stage. Mm. So I guess it was. I don't know if it's important to the play because she could easily be from a middle class background, you know, I think. Mm. What do you think? Um, I think it's refreshing, like, it's a nice... Yeah. And it's not like, it's not like poverty porn or anything. It's not like, no. whoa, me, I'm so poor, like, oh, or whatever. No, it's just like a normal woman, like, trying to yeah. live her life. But you know, that's, that's quite important, I think, though, because... I think um, it, 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 that's right because of, often you, you don't get uh, someone who, she, she's a decent, she's a working woman who yeah. actually does quite well and that's not really something you see you sort of see these extremes of stuff don't you you don't mm. just see people getting on with their life and doing things yeah yeah, yeah. so obviously a very big moment in the play maybe not if you disagree the moment when the character lets the audience know that she doesn't, that her children are not there. Yeah, yeah. So what was the idea behind that? How did that come about? Uh, I think, like, when, I think when, you, when you're writing, it just sort of feels natural for that to happen. Like, like it, it, it felt... Um, it, like, once I realised she had this relationship with, with us, with who she was talking to, which is the audience, you know, once I felt she had this relationship... Um, it, it, it felt quite natural to me, her relationship. Like, and, and I love the way Kerry does it. It's unbelievable because she, she just feels... It feels so natural the way she's talking to people. And, you know, I, I, I honestly don't know how she does it. She's incredible. But it, it just felt at a certain moment it was it was right for her to sort of go, this isn't real. You'll, you'll get that, don't you? You know what I mean? And it just felt, it felt sort of natural. But it is an incredibly important moment because up until then, it's quite funny, particularly the way Kerry's doing it. And it's, it's much funnier than I ever thought it would be. I mean, it's, it's really, you know, it feels warm and funny and relaxed. And uh, then everything sort of shifts in that moment. I think that's quite important. And lastly, how involved were you with the creation of the production? Yeah, I was pretty involved. I mean, uh, I wrote the play. I didn't write it for anyone. I didn't, okay. No one knew I was writing it. I didn't, it wasn't a commission. And then I took it to Lindsay, who's the director, because 
I, I'd met Lindsay before and I just was incredibly impressed by her. I just thought she was really smart. And um, I really liked her and I just said to Lindsay, I emailed at her and said, I've got this play, are you interested in it? And she read it and she liked it. And then we sort of messed around. Then we took it to the court, you know. So it was a, that was a long sort of process. But by, the, by this time we got into rehearsals, I, I really trusted Lindsay a lot, you know. Mm. I, I think she knew this play intimately. She knew it as well as I did. Um, I was involved in the first week, so, I mean, that's not the way I'd normally work, is I'll come in for the first week and I'll sort of, you know, just say anything I've got to say and help, uh, sort of, st I if I can, you know, answer questions and things, you know, and then I'll just bugger off and dip, because otherwise, if you sit there watching them, you just it's just a nightmare, you know, it's a nightmare for you, but it's a nightmare for them, because there's, it's a process, you know, they mm. have to sort of get to a certain, actors have to get to a certain place, and as a writer, you're not much use there, you know. Uh, and then towards the end, I'd sort of come in, you know. But I have to be honest, this more than anything else I've ever done. I felt really, uh, I felt really safe actually. I felt, I felt the play was in real safe hands because I thought Carrie's. What, what was interesting is I've never, I've, I, I, this is genuine, but I've never quite experienced an actor who got a play so perfectly, so so sort of thoroughly as Carrie. Like not, what normally happens is you. I guess you hope an actor is going to get seventy percent of a play. Mm. Normally they get about 20%. No, they don't, that's not true. But sometimes they do. Sometimes they get 0%, you know. And that is difficult because you suddenly think, oh, fuck, we've cast you and you've got it all wrong. And now we've got to really, really work, you know. Uh, but sometimes, you know, you get really good actors can get like 50, 60, 70% of the play. Kerry got it all. Like, there was, not, there was hardly ever a moment where I... I can't remember a moment where I thought... She, I, she's got it wrong there. Like mm. her instincts were often better than mine with the character. You know what I mean? It's 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 quite uncanny. I've n never seen it before. So yeah. Cool. Well, thank you. Now we're going to open it up to the audience and try and ask questions and not statements. If that's okay. <laughs> We've got like ten-ish minutes. So the lady in the lovely funky top. We're going to pass the mic down. Mm. I'm sorry if this is a bit off the wall, um, but very sadly, what, what you were describing happened to a very good friend of mine. Right. And she was actually stabbed by her husband when she lost her two children. Right. And her comfort has come from religion. Religion. Now, I know your play isn't about that, but did you think about bringing yeah. that into it? Because for her, it's like, when I die, I'll see my children again. Honestly, that's yeah. her, keeps her going. We, and, I didn't uh, think about bringing it into the play, but we, talk, we talked about religion. We talked about belief and how, and you know, how that can be something very comforting, but it's whether you believe in it or not. You know, like not everyone, not everyone sort of, not everyone's going to go with that. And I, I don't know whether this character um, is religious. I suspect she might have some kind of belief. Whether she sort of thinks she's going to meet her kids again, I don't. I don't know. I don't know. But you know, it's it, it, it wasn't it wasn't something I felt I, I wanted to bring to play. Not because I've got a problem with religion. It just didn't feel this this stuff that just doesn't end up in there. You know. Mm. Yeah, I think it's given her comfort. I, I'm, I'm sure know, it has. I mean, it, it gives it, her survival, I suppose. Yeah, survival. and also it, it's just finding a way to make sense of something. And you know, I think if it, if I were in that situation, that's probably what I would do as well. Mm -hmm. I would want to do that because you know, there's there's love in there, isn't there? You know. Mm. Well, thank you. Thank you, um, gentlemen, right here. Just pass the mic. Uh, thanks. I, I absolutely love the play. I was going to ask if um, you always knew it was going to be a monologue or if you ever thought about bringing in, I guess, the, the husband. Just it would have made, I guess it would have changed the play a lot, but did you yeah. ever think about that? And also, did you ever, was there a reason why the two main characters were never named? Uh, I just, you know what? I never thought of a name for her. And then once I, thought, <laughs> once I never thought of a name for her, I thought I'd never find a name. I, I can't. I just couldn't be bothered giving them names, and, and it was actually a little bit difficult Fans. because there's moments where there's some quite clumsy moments where she says things like, and then he turns around and sees me, and, and it's like, if I could use her name, you know, it would be fine. If I could use his name to refer to him, it was quite... But once I'd done that, I felt that was the right thing to do. Um, I never thought about bringing him in. I, was, I wasn't ever interested, and, and um, uh, you know, it's, it's uh, something that I think it's... Probably a fair criticism that I'm not showing his side of it. I, I, make, I, can't, I make no apologies for it because I think uh, I, I didn't really want to show his side of it. I mean, I think we get to know as much as she does. You know what I mean? We, we get to sort of know... She doesn't know all this stuff. She doesn't... You know, she doesn't get to have a really nice 
Um, you know, for the, the 23 minutes, for example, they're doing it in, in Germany at the moment, and the directors have been really asking me about the 23 minutes, and I don't know, I don't know what happened, and she doesn't know either, and we will never know. It will always be something we don't get. So I, I just felt like I didn't really want, I didn't want, I thought if I brought him in, it would be too much his story, you know mm. what I mean? Thank you. Uh, don't yeah. want to neglect anyone at the top. Oh. oh, yeah, no, we go up first. Thank you. Sorry. <laughs> Ellie, oh, bless. Thank you. Uh, this play has triggered off a memory for me, which happened about 35 years ago, and it was at the top of a car park in Redditch in Birmingham, where somebody I knew of was stabbed 57 times. It's in all in newspapers. Right. And it was an unbelievable thing to cope with, and it's just brought it back to me today. And all this business, why did it happen? Why does it happen mm. like this? We just don't know from one moment to another what another person is going to do or how they're going to handle it. But I enjoyed the way you did this play very much indeed. Thank you. Especially towards the end. You know, it, I was really gripped by the end and the way it finished. Yeah. I, I mean, I think that's... Um you know, again, testament to, to Kerry that, that it, we, when we did the um, the violence is the most difficult part of this play, and you know, I, I can say hand on heart is the hardest thing I've ever actually written, but personally, you know, and I mean, I'm not one of these people that kind of goes, oh, I was in tears when I was writing it because I'm just writing, you know what I mean? But it was it's, it's kind of hard. You form a relationship to those kids, and you as an audience form a relationship to those kids, and I think what, what we we really discussed it a lot, you know, how, how we were going to make it work, and. In, in the first draft of the play, um, or it, you know, the actor, the character said to the audience, "This is the hard bit. If any of you want to go, you can go." Um, but Lindsay was quite Lindsay quite rightly pointed out that no one's going to do that. <laughs> it's the raw court, like you know, like if you're in the middle over there. It's just hard. Yeah, uh, Imagine yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, I'm off. But um, actually, it was Carrie's idea to come up with the the, the sort of um, it was based on. Uh, 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 an experience she'd had and she sort of talked about someone who had said you know uh, just remember this isn't happening now uh, or, or you know and, and I thought that was such a generous way to do it so I think actually it's the, it's it, it, there's another version of this play done in an alternate universe which is just you know that part is really aggressive and we never wanted it to be that we, we always wanted it to be guiding the audience through it we know it's difficult to go through it so you know she was really care you know she was great with it um, yeah, uh, lady in the cool jacket. <laughs> this is all about what everyone's wearing. Isn't yeah, it? I so know. Yeah. Everyone yeah. tell me where you got your stuff Late, later. Bloke, <laughs> in the shit, bloke in the shit tank top. That's gonna, that's gonna <laughs> <laughs> he said it, not me. Anyway. <laughs> um, I just wanted to know if you, um, if you know what the kids said and, uh, and how you developed their personalities in rehearsal. Yeah, well, I, I don't know what the kids said, but interestingly, what would happen was um, Kerry, the director, and the assistant director would do it on the stage. So Lindsay, the director, would pretend to be a, a little boy going, yeah! <laughs> and Millie would be, uh, you know, she, he, she, she'd be running around going, Bruh! and Millie would be going, he's breaking my things. And what was really good about that was it gave Kerry a really strong physicality. I mean, I love those moments, like when she's sort of, there's a moment when she drags out the high chair, and I sort of think, there's a baby in that high chair. There, there, there isn't. Like, there's, there's nothing. <laughs> there's nothing there, you know. But they, they did a lot of work, and they got a movement director in as well to sort of get the physicality right. Cool, thank you. Uh, yeah, one more at the top. Thank you. I also thought it was absolutely brilliant. I really enjoyed the play. Did you do any research? Did you talk to anybody who'd been in this situation, or do any research like that? Could you wave your hand, because I can't see you up there. Oh, they, you up there, are you? Is that you? I'm yes, yeah. here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I didn't talk to anyone that had been through, through this, because quite honestly, I just didn't think I had the right to, to sort of say I'm writing a play about this. And, um, you know, but I talked to a, a criminologist who... Actually, the guy who uh, came up with the theory, uh, the four different things of um, family annihilation, before that, there were two, the idea was there were two different... Um, things and he's a really interesting guy uh, and I did a lot of research you know I, I read about around it and looked into a lot of different cases I mean there's a load of stuff out there but there's not enough you know there, there really isn't and, and it, the, the guy who did that study is you know he 
is desperate for people to do more research. His, his study was really about sort of, um, you know, just t scratching the surface of this. And we need to find out more. If, you want, if we really want to find out how this happens and how to prevent it, we need to find out more. But there just isn't much out there, you know. But I did, I did, like I said, I, didn't feel, I just didn't feel it was right to sort of intrude on someone's grief like that, if I'm honest. Uh, yeah, lady over here. Um, I was just wondering how much input you have with the set and sort of what your thoughts are on how the set was put together and done. Yeah, I, well, you know, what happens is they show you a model box. And when I look at a model box, I always think, oh, it's a bit small. Because <laughs> and, and, uh, I'm not very visual. Like, so I, when, I, when I'm writing, I, I don't see things. I hear voices really clearly, but I don't um, ever see anything. So, but I thought it looked beautiful, you know, and I thought it, as, I mean, there's this, that incredible effect they have of the, uh, the projection, which sort of fades away. It, it is gorgeous, you know, and I mean, I was just very happy with it because I thought it was beautiful. I didn't have a, a huge amount of input. Occasionally, I'd sort of go, you know, may, maybe... I think I, I probably quite liked the idea when they sort of brought little coloured things in. There'd be a, like, like a little coloured apple or something there. I thought, oh, that looks great, you know, but they were on that already. They weren't doing <laughs> it because I, it weren't my idea. <laughs> I think there is. You'd have to ask Ez, the set designer, but I think they're things that she uses, and 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 they're, they're probably things that Carrie. They're, they're things that will mean something to Carrie. You know, I mean, she's Car You know, Carrie sort of goes into these things in a lot of detail. So it's you know to make the character real. You know. Well, we're out of time. Oh, Sorry if shame. anyone's got a question, but um, thank you so much. It's been a privilege. Thank you for spending your time, and let's have a round of applause for Dennis.